Okay, this is a, a fairly quick video just to basically show you how to record MIDI and audio in FL Studio. Now, um, there are a lot of videos that show you how to capture MIDI um, so that you can play internal sounds in FL Studio from an external keyboard, just a, a, a standard MIDI keyboard. And there are also a lot of videos that show you how to record your audio in um, FL Studio and uh, manipulate the audio and use samples and, and that kind of thing. Um, what there isn't, or what I haven't seen a lot of, is a video that shows you both how to capture the audio from your external synthesizer along with the MIDI um, that it's uh, transmitting and then be able to play back that, um, that sound um, using the external synthesizer. So you're just basically using FL Studio like a, an old-fashioned um, uh, MIDI um, MIDI sequencer, you know, from the good old days. So if you're old school um, and that's what you're looking to do, then uh, this video is probably for you. Now, just before we start, um, one very quick thing: everyone's Windows is set up differently, um, so there's a lot of configuration that needs to be done on the sound side before you can even start. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself or do some Google searches, but basically um, when you go to the sound parameters in um, in the control panel, you just in Windows 7 it's just under hardware and sound, uh, and you go to this recording tab, in your line in you should see um, when you play a note on your keyboard, you should see something uh, reacting. Now. The way I've got it set up, I'm actually also hearing the sound through the speakers. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that because you can use FL Studio to monitor and play back the sound for you when you're in, in the studio. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether you hear it or don't hear it. Um, but as long as this is actually um, acknowledging or, or, you know, it's registering that um, sound is being sent through. And you can probably hear this just about through um, through my microphone. Okay. So once you've got that, um, we, we can start. If you don't get that far, you're going to have to do some Googling. Um, so let's just uh, kill that for now. And we're going to launch FL Studio. Now, right from the start, there's a few things you want to, to make sure. Uh, make sure your master mix is up. And make sure your, your pattern selector is up. The buttons are here to, um, to bring those things in. Um, you should know how to do all that. If you don't and you're a real beginner, you probably need to read the manual, um, but assuming that you've got that far, there's a few things we want to do right from the start. The first is go to the MIDI settings and make sure that you do have your MIDI input and MIDI output set up. Now the MIDI input um, is this middle section here, just make sure that you select whatever it is that's your con external controller and click the enable here and it should say active. If you just want to test that and see whether or not um, that's the case, you just hit a key, and this orange button here should flash, uh, should flash orange. Um, nothing happens there, then you've got a problem with your MIDI input, and you probably will be missing drivers. You should download the drivers for your particular device and install them. The second thing to check is the out MIDI out. Um, because in this particular, this is something you might not usually bother with, but in this demo, we're going to be um, playing MIDI notes out of the sequencer into your synthesizer um, for automatic playback. And again, select your device, um, and here you'll want to select a port number. Now, this port number may just say dash dash dash, but actually choose a number from 0 to 255. I'm just going to select 1 for the purpose of the demo. Just move that aside for one minute. The next thing to do is to create a channel on your on your um, on your sequence um, for recording MIDI, and the one I choose is uh, just this MIDI out. It's um, the reason why is because it can record MIDI notes that you're playing, and then it will transmit those MIDI notes out when you're done. I'm just going to rename that to something sensible. Um, I'm going to call it Radius, which is the name of my synthesizer, um, and now we have a MIDI. MIDI, um, we have a, basically a plain MIDI channel, which is like, um, similar to what you have in Logic and Cubase and those things. The final thing is to select a, um, a mixer input. Now, because of the way that I've got this set up, um, you can't actually see anything registering on, on this mixer when I play, even though you can hear the sound, turn the volume up high enough, you don't see anything registering here. 
The reason why is because FL Studio is ignoring the audio input. So what you need to do is select um, a channel. You can select any channel. I usually select something above 10 because I usually use these for internal instruments and drum patterns and stuff. And on this in here, you need to select the input um, that your synthesizer is connected to. Now this is not MIDI, this is the audio input. So select the audio input there. Um, you might get some dialog that tells you that a particular drive is being used and then when you when you hit go you can see it recording. Now you could probably hear a slight echo on this, some feedback. The reason why is because the screen capture that I'm using to record this video is picking up both the input um, on the Windows audio and the input on the FL Studio input, uh, input is, is using both drives at the same time. It's a little bit disconcerting. Um, but just for the purpose of this demo, it doesn't make any difference. Now, if I actually reduce this master down to zero, you can see that um, that no longer happens. It's only picking up this, um, this insert here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, so once you've got your audio set up and you can actually hear the thing, we can actually start recording. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that. One final thing is um, on the device here, device setting here, um, when the channel setting dialog comes up, you want to make sure this port setting here is selected to the, is, is the same port that you had on the MIDI settings ch channel here. So on the output here, you had port number one and here we've got port number one. That means that basically this channel is transmitting um, to port one. So anything that records will transmit to port one. Okay, so now we're just about ready to record something. Um, I'm just going to select a slightly friendlier sound. Um, okay, that'll do. And what I'm going to do is um, just in the same way you'd record anything else, I'm going to set the metronome um, and hit the record button and we're going to record something. Now I can't hear the clicking, which is a little bit disconcerting because um, it will feed back, but there it is. Let's just record something really simply. Now I've actually made a, a classic mistake there. I've actually recorded onto this hi-hat track by accident. I'm not too sure how that happened. Um, I'm just going to delete that um, and start again. Uh, and it's really easy to do that. Make sure that you're recording on the track that you created and not some other track. So let's try that again. Right, and now that's just playing back what I recorded. And just to uh, show you this is an external instrument. And we can stop there. Um, very easy. And that's basically how you do it. Now you can create as many of these tracks as you want, and you can have different MIDI channels assigned to each one, and have different MIDI channels on your synthesizer assigned to each one. Um, but if you already know how to do that kind of thing, you probably wouldn't have needed this tutorial. But that's basically how you do it. Um, it's pretty. Um, simple once you know how, the, but the key thing to remember is you're recording two things. You're recording MIDI in, um, which is basically the notes that you press on the keyboard, and that's just digital signals recording the notes that you're playing. It doesn't record any audio, but you're also capturing the audio so you can actually hear it. Um, the next thing that you could do here is you could create an audio track here and record the audio to that track. Um, just like you, you would any other external audio. But generally when you're using an external synthesizer, there's no need to really do that um, until you're ready to mix down or you've got everything set up perfectly. But having the, um, the synthesizer be able to be played back from FL Studio gives you a lot more flexibility. You can use your software synths as well as your external synths um, in, in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a good mix. 
So that's it. If you've got any questions, please post them on the channel, um, and I'll try and get to them. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, apologies that that was so rushed, but um, I actually have a time limit on how much I can record using this uh, using this thing here. But it's, it's half a half a gigabyte already. Okay, thanks for watching.